You've outlined your priorities in your State of the City address, and uh, some of it is political speak as it would be. Uh, we have tried to build Johannesburg as a world African city. Is it? Not yet. World class African city, I mean. Yes. Is it? Yes, not yet, uh, but we are on our way there. Hence, uh, we've got a long-term plan, and this is the plan that's unfolding now. We did say in the speech yesterday that uh, the plan was disrupted uh, by the political happenings of 2016, and of course uh, in 2020 uh, by COVID-19. So we spent a better part of 2020 responding to, to COVID-19, um, trying to rebuild uh, from there, you know, the services, the economy and all that. And we are at that stage now where we want to thrive towards uh, being a world-class African city. <laughs> the disruption you refer to, of course, uh, is uh, the loss of power in uh, the metro by the ANC. People would say you've had a long time as the governing party to deal with the issues Johannesburg faces. Uh, this has now become a city of grime and crime, and many will even say it doesn't give a dime. Well, if you were here in 1992 in, in Johannesburg and you compare Johannesburg to today, the growth of Johannesburg, people coming in, in migration, the growth of many townships, you know, the consolidation, the, the building of uh, even Sentin itself, where we are here, the growth of Sentin, because Melrose, Melrose was built in the democratic government, uh, you know, waterfall. Um, so, so, so if you look at Johannesburg 1992, Johannesburg today, we're accepting 10,000 people a day. A, a month into Johannesburg, 120,000, many of them very poor, and sitting on the fringes, uh, staying on the fringes of the city in poverty. Of course, the city, as the economic hub of the country, uh, was always going to be a, a city of growth. Uh, that's, uh, you know, the natural consequence of the resources that are here. But explain to me how we've had, say, for example, a billing problem since 2009 that we are still battling to resolve. I think that, uh, you know, when I joined government in 2011 as MMC Finance, uh, where the billing problem was uh, and where it is today, um, I, I think that if an error rate of 1% a month, uh, of course, if it's your, it's an error on your account, it's an error too much. I mean, we were sitting in billing queries a month of around 55,000 then uh, from 2009, 2011. Now we reduced to about 4,000 a month. Um, the, the issue here is how to how to quickly respond to the query as the customers uh, raise their queries. Uh, but I'm, I'm satisfied that in, largely uh, we, we have broken the back of the billing problem. We want 100% an error free billing process, but you know, because these are meter metered services, water is a metered service, uh, electricity is a metered service, um, you know, uh, you know, finger problems and other things that happen throughout, you know, from a meter to a verification system into the SEP system, tariffing into producing a bill, it's actually a process and I don't think that it can be error free. Um, I don't think there's any city in the world that's error free. Uh, but Mr. Mayor, you came back to the Executive Council with still some questions around your own past, uh, the EOH matter, the contracts, the issues you've had to go to the Zonda Commission to go and speak about, uh, you still insist there was no conflict of interest in you receiving money from businesses that were doing business with, this, uh, with the city, even when uh, in areas that you had oversight. You know, these are issues that I can vast. One, in the Ethics Committee of Council, uh, it's with the Integrity Commissioner, uh, it's with the, with the Zondo Commission. And I think I've articulated the points in the Zondo Commission, but I, want, I don't want to prejudge uh, what uh, the outcome would be. I'm very convinced that uh, the issues that I was answering started when I was in business in 2005, but I want to leave it there because, um, you know, they were canvassed publicly sure. Um, sure. And, and they're still to be adjudicated. I raise it because the EOH contract obviously now is is not going to be renewed. A cynic might say Stephen Van Collier has come forward, uh, come clean. Uh, that process is now uh, uh, being changed. Bye-bye EOH. No more money to cream of tenders. I think, you know, he he's, he's at his side of the story. Completely, completely wrong, I think. Um, he he, he mis, misread what, what exactly was happening at that time in 2016 because uh, he's talking about things of 2016 July, <laughs> just before elections. So so I'm not even sure what uh, what, what he was referring to. Um, if the times to answer and to respond to him, we'll do that. Uh, if we have to cross-question... So we'll you're not that. canceling the contract because the taps have run dry? No, 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 no. We're not doing that. It's, it's run out and they want to pull out of the city. Uh, the city manager, the previous city manager came to me and said, these guys want to pull out and said, look, go to the market and find the uh, alternatives.
Yesterday, you were outlining your priorities uh, for what you want to do for the city of Johannesburg going forward. One of the issues uh, that constantly comes up is ESCOM and power, right? You're saying uh, you want to take over some of uh, power provision because councillors, for example, get attacked for things the city has no control over. Yes, we we are we are negotiating with ESCOM to to get the ESCOM supply areas into the city. Uh, the negotiations are ongoing, uh, so we we still working with National Treasury, with Cogta National, with Department of Enterprises, ESCOM itself. But the task teams are at work, hard at work. It's true that our councillors are under pressure. I mean, today I was looking at our councillors WhatsApp group. It's actually bad in so it is bad in tips load. Uh, they are being they are being attacked. Yeah. But part of Eskom's load reduction policy is to deal with those communities that use power they don't pay for. How will it be different uh, if the city takes over? Well, well, we think that uh, we we will get into a different social compact. Um, we we are politically responsible for those areas anyway. We supply water, roads, and 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 housing. Sure, and those but those services must be paid for. Yes, no, no, I agree, I agree. I'm saying that we, the communities must be brought through. Many of these communities agree, as as home goes, to to prepaid, to split metering for their electricity to be restored. So, so it's happening throughout Soweto and other areas. So, I think we'll 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 be able to manage. You've got to tell me how. I'm not. I mean, look, what we don't want is is to have electioneering and make a nice promise that practically is not good. I want to understand if residents who are in fact turning ESCOM employees away when they want to install prepaid meters, when they want to make sure that people uh, use uh, uh, electricity and services that they pay for, they get turned away. How are you going to do it differently? How are you going to manage it differently? I've been on the bill of the beast. I've been in communities when ESCOM and communities have been in conflict. I've been in White City. I've been in Chawela, um, you know, engaging, mediating, uh, getting communities to agree to split metering. Communities buying many many of the communities are starting to buy electricity. Uh, the, the 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 rate of um, vending in ESCOM is increased. I mean, we see our our vending um, in in Johannesburg, especially for water, is starting to take a turn because uh, you know we're losing a lot of water. People are not paying. Okay. we're doing the same in Orange Farm. You know, uh, so so I think communities are starting to realize that you know they have to contribute to 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 ESCOM and to Johannesburg Water. We've got Debucho on the line from Bramfontein. Debucho, you've got uh, a thought for the on exactly this issue. Go ahead. He's listening. Hi, Bongani. Uh, I just wanted to say to the mayor that ESCOM technicians are the source of the blackouts in those townships that he has mentioned. So whatever the city decides, taking over those technicians from ESCOM must not be one of one of the issues they did. Okay, it must not be one of the things that they're going to do. It's okay. going to be a bad idea. They are they tamper with those meters in the township for a fee. If you're going to move those people to city power, you are inviting something that you cannot control. And the last thing, uh, Bongani, is is it only those four or five areas that were mentioned, Ivory Park, uh, Orange Farm, Soweto, and whatever, or is it all the townships that fall under ESCOM in the city of Johannesburg? All right, Thank let's you. put that down. Thank you, Debucho, for that call. Mr. Mayor, responses to that. He says... Uh, you are you are opening up a Pandora's box. Corruption, corruption, corruption is behind some of this. I think it's interesting from what he's saying. I mean, we are aware that uh, some of the uh, technicians would be called to come and restore outside the process. Um, some communities paying. ESCOM is aware of that. Communities have raised uh, raised it with us and raised it with ESCOM. And I know that the fraud unit is is investigating that. So so it's a, it's a source of concern uh, that it's been happening in one or two communities in, in Soweto. But our negotiations with ESCOM is wall to wall so that the entirety of Johannesburg is, is with us. Let's go to John in Rotoport. Your question, John, for the mayor. Go ahead. Uh, thanks, Mogani. Two questions from our side. When would the mayor start um, instructing JMPD that when there is load shedding, there must be men in the, rob- the robots so that they can direct traffic? In other words, and what happens, you see them right after the robot. Got you, John. Got you. You've made that question. Uh, let's put it to the mayor. Let's see what he has to say to that. I want to get it, I want to get through mm-hmm. as many as possible. John's gone. Uh, JMPD during load shedding, why aren't they manning the traffic lights? 
we're trying we're, quite, we're trying to get them to especially the regional uh, jmpds they'd know when there's load shedding we wouldn't know from the center but you know we now uh, back with the insurance points people um so so they are augmenting our capacity of the jmpd uh, to do traffic control and pointsman duty uh, during during times like this and during peak okay. time mapula is in road report your question for the mayor mapula go ahead hi uh, Bongan, i just want to find out from the mayor why they have turned the road report particularly that Borgi into a stepchild of Johannesburg. I mean, this area is totally ignored. I mean, you look at our roads, and I'm going to mention C.R. Swart towards Velcher Road. I mean, that road has been pushed and pushed and pushed. The road from uh, Collette Street into Ondekas, it has been pushed and pushed and pushed. Rodeport Town itself has, be- it has become a slum area. Okay. It's a slum. All you right. know, what is happening? Okay, Mapula, thank you for that call. Was Rodeport a slum, Mayor? Report is one of our focal areas. Report run back the former inner cities of Johannesburg and surrounds. Uh, with this accelerated service delivery program, we'll be going street by street, word by word. I did tell um, the colleagues in Region E and Region B that we will be coming to them. We're still finishing mid rent which is Region A and Region G, which is the deep south, and then we'll be going on to all all, all areas. We are a bit, quite a bit worried about the state of report. And, and other areas, as you say, the inner city. I mean, what are you doing with the slum lords? Uh, my sense is you don't even know necessarily how many people reside in some of the buildings in the inner city, in areas like Hillbrow. Hence, we're seeing so many challenges with waste management. I think that's part of the problem. Um, you know, when I, when I arrived, General CB had that mandate. He still has that mandate to deal with uh, high-check buildings, to deal with uh, derelict buildings. Uh, we, we we still had it work, but it's a it's a, it's a big 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 battle that we're having with the slum lords, with the building hijackers. Um, some of them foreign nationals. Uh, so so it's a big battle, but it's a battle that will win nevertheless. I've got in front of me um, pictures uh, that uh, were reported in in the Star, the hijacking of Florence Nightingale. Uh, That uh, hospital that used to uh, provide services is now an area that's been taken over by vagrants. Even something as iconic as that has been lost. Part of the problem is uh, the owners of our buildings, uh, that they they abandon their buildings, they they don't look after their buildings. um, they 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 leave it to the responsibility of the city to to look after their own buildings. I mean, when you look for owners of these derelict buildings that owe the city a lot of money, some of them you can't even find. They're in Australia or something like that. But uh, you know, I think it's a it's a, this is an indictment uh, on on the city of Johannesburg, the landscape. Florence Nightingale used to be one of the flagships uh, uh, of our city. Um, you should see these pictures. I'm trying to point them yes, to so you. I mean, have you seen now. them? It's yeah. it's, abs- it's 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 quite extraordinary. It's in the Star today. If you want to have a look at it. Um, I've mentioned this area near the High Court, for example, in Johannesburg, uh, that small street area. Uh, it's a virtual dumping site, the stench of urine you can find uh, on any given day, disposable nappies, food wastage. You've got these informal traders who are operating in an environment of absolute, absolute filth. That's intolerable, surely. It is. I agree with you. We are working with the, the, the court itself. Uh, we're working with the Methodist Church to try and get that whole precinct back. You know, the pitchy chambers, the, the other chambers around around those areas. You know what? what What's what, the problem? We, we have pick it up, cleaning the city three times a day. I mean, if you go four o'clock in the morning, it's actually quite clean there. Yeah. But go around seven o'clock. Um, uh, the people just don't care about the environment where they live. I mean, we tried to to control, you know, informal trading around about 2013 to, under former Pakistan. Uh, they went to court. We lost the case in the high court. And I mean, in the, in the, in the, in the um, constitutional court. Uh, that they what about right. police visibility? The region, the region F, we call it F1, the region F police, um, the bio law enforcement uh, really stretched, but we, we are capacitating it with the intakes and all that because that whole area, I mean, from, from around um, what what used to be Commissioner Street to Bree Street, um, yeah. through that whole belt of um, a small street, you know, from Carlton Center, yeah. it, is, it is a worry. So we I mean, say we, we can't do anything no, about no, no, it? No, no, we, we're still throwing uh, the bodies on it. We, we sweep twice a day. I mean, you can go there now, pick it up, Is there. Again, you know, the, the, the shop, the shopkeepers, the, the the traders there, they have to they have to pay um, you know for their skip beans. They have to pay commercial rates for 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 waste management. You know, and then what they do is that they just dump on the road so that they they can avoid to pay. Uh, one or two of them have been fined because they've been caught on camera doing that. It's, it's actually quite a problem. The problem police, is more police were there. They might not do it. Let's get through some of these calls, Mayor Rocky is in Rodeport. Do you want to talk about illegal connections? Rocky, go ahead. 
Bongani. I just want to find out what the mayor is planning to do with the legal connections around the informal settlements. For instance, we've got two informal settlements here. We've got Princess, we've got M. Shangin. Go there, it's horrible. The, the, the electric wires are crisscrossing. And uh, now and again, people get electrocuted there in those informal settlements, okay. and nothing is being done. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, illegal connections and informal settlements, Mayor? Big problem. Uh, part of uh, the grants we get from national because uh, of the delay in delivery of houses um, is to block, um, you know, to order, to order the, the informal settlements and electrify them. We've electrified some of them, uh, but the ones that it is referring to, I know Princess uh, is being improved and upgraded so that they can be, uh, it's the process to be slow, but in Tlangen itself, it's a, it, needs, it, needs, it needs a whole lot of work because it's, in the, it's on the flat line, it's just next to the stream, uh, right in Roddy Point. So it's very near to, to West Gate. So I know the areas I've been there myself. So so we are, will be working on them. Lucky in Deep Cliff, uh, you want to talk about uh, dilapidated buildings and hostels? Yeah, born in Bohan. Hi, Lucky. Go ahead. Hello. The mayor's listening. Yeah, you know, I, I live in Deep Cliff hostel here, you know. And the place is so dilapidated. It's dirty. You know, we've had promise after promise. Uh, Paul Mashatile came, Non Vula Mokonyan also came. There's Bachinchisana Nati Lavantu. There's Mikukus all over. Yeah, okay. every no every politician comes. Own. Yeah, every politician comes with promises. Lucky, that's what you are saying, Mr. Mayor. How are you different? The province has uh, built uh, houses around to try and improve uh, the deep blue hostels, but we think that it was a wrong product because it was a, what do you call the CRUs where the, the residents had to rent and all that. So there was not an agreement between the residents and those houses. So so they stayed empty for a while, and unfortunately they've been badly, badly vandalized because it was meant to be a block-by-block block, uh, improvement of the deep blue hostel. Um, the province, I think, is still committed to that because it's not in our jurisdiction to, to look after that hostel. So what can you say to Lucky? No, I'm saying to Lucky that we are working you know, we are working with province and he knows if ever he's part of the, the committee that... Yeah, uh, he says he's heard those promises before. But the houses were built. <laughs> the, the, way, the way houses were built around around Deep Cliff Hostel. It's only that as they say, I think they, want, they, they look for RDP houses as uh, giveaways. Uh, meanwhile, the product that was built was a CRU, was a rental stock and so, so there's a mismatch between what the, com- the community of hostel was So they were built to. without consultation? I'm not sure because uh, they were built by province, but I think that uh, later on with hindsight, we realized that we built the wrong product for the wrong community uh, in hostel because we should have built maybe high-rise uh, PNG product. In fact, what the city housing was saying to me around Dubai now, not doing top cliff, they said, look, let's let's refurbish this and turn them into giveaways uh, because otherwise it, it's a waste. It's really fruitless expenditure. Larato is in Boxburg. Larato, your question for the mayor? Mr. Mayor, I just want to find out what the mayor is going to do about the vagrants down Moy Street and the bridges when we're going to Kazin, a city deep, and the some street of rent. All the bridges, there are squatter camps developing right under Moy Street. I All want right. to say to Mr. Mayor, take a drive down Johannesburg and see for yourself. Don't believe in hearsay because if a tourist comes into this country one night and off rent in Moy Street and they didn't know what was happening, it's going to be a big problem. Gotcha, the road, when you go to Wemapen, it's sinking in and nothing has been done. It's more than three months. Gotcha, Lerato. I think Magdalene in Soweto has the same concern. Quickly, Magdalene, go ahead. The mayor's listening. Uh, Mayor, good morning. I just want to find out how are you going to control crime in the CBD? You know, it's not safe anymore to work in Jovic. People are mad during the day. People have been killed. I've been working there for more than, I think, six years. And it was quite nice moving from working from Brafontein to Fort Beck. But now I'm scared because of okay. the crime. The crime right. is high Thank Ma- you. Thank you, Magdalene. Um, vagrants uh, under the bridges in the CBD, crime in the CBD? The issue of vagrants and displaced people, it's a, it's a big issue. We take them to shelters and homes. They come out with them the next day. I mean, it's not only in the CBD. Rivonia Road under the bridge. Um, um, if you go to Oxford Road under the bridge, we remove them all the time. I mean, I stay in the south of Johannesburg. There's one who set up shop right next to Southgate. We we remove them all the time. Um, we, we need to find a lo- lasting solution with these vagrants, especially the ones who set up shop in the in the open spaces in our parks, Delta Park, George Lee Park in Centen. Um, they've set up shop 
job there. So, so we need to, to, to deal with that. I mean, our social development, we, we've been removing them continuously. You know, they're, they're like these guys who clean the, 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 the windscreens on the, on the, on the off ramp and the on ramps. I mean, this, that's not legal. That's not, that's not good. And it's very dangerous for, especially for, for, for crime. It just seems though that ultimately, whether it's uh, the waste issue, the vagrants, there's a lot of people who, I don't know, should we say, uh, thumb their nose at the bylaws. There's no enforcement of the bylaws. That's essentially what I'm hearing. I'm not hearing a mayor who's got the capacity to make sure that the bylaws uh, that are in place are enforced. No, no, we do. We do. We do it. Our BMU, our bylaw enforcement unit, uh, does enforce the bylaws. Not enough. Not enough, yes. Not enough. So, so which is why we said, you no, know, we need to change the way of policing. We, we need to have ward-based, area-based policing from the JMPD side. That's why we talked about the 10 plus. And that plus means you have a building inspector, you have a park ranger, you have you have all other uh, bylaw enforcement that are not sitting with the JMPD and are sitting elsewhere, you know, building control. So are you that. saying that one day window washers on our traffic lights, is that going to be a thing of the past? I'm it doesn't s- seem like you can ever get a handle on that. I, I'm, I'm saying that um, uh, uh, we, we will be focusing the region E where we are now, in Centen, the region E, uh, police in what 103 where we are, must... They've got the responsibility as part of the KPIs that all these traffic lights uh, are free of those uh, uh, individuals. And of course, crime, that's why we say localized policing, knowing what's happening in an area. We can, turning Sentin and turning the inner city is probably not fair. Probably the inner city will need 20 or 30 because of its densities, because of the level of crimes, yeah. because of that. So that's that's what we, we were talking about. In the speech, I say local so, well, local problems need local solutions. Heidi in four ways is raising an issue we've already heard about this morning. You want to talk about William Nickel Drive. Heidi, good morning. Good morning, Bongani. Hi, go ahead. The mayor's listening. Hello. Uh, good morning, Mayor. Sorry, I just wanted to ask, Bongani actually asked my question, um, that William Nicol between Fours and um, Dipslet and even all the way to the highway has been in disrepair for, for many, many years now. And um, yeah, I just want to know what's happening. Okay. All right. We've got a call earlier. Thank you, Heidi. Someone says you're busy renaming it. Fix it. The province has promised me that they'll be fixing it. You know, you know like the M2. So that falls under province? Portions. It's like the M2. There's a portion for, for the city. There's a portion for... But but you can't see where it is. So so from from around uh, uh, four ways mall, to past Dane City, past uh, Dane Fen, right up to Deep Slot, that, that's a provincial part. But then the, 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 the earlier part is the city. The... We're working with the province, but the province has promised us that the the procurement process is finalized because the earlier guy, I think, he collapsed. The the, the earlier was liquidated. The guy who was doing the road before the diversion into Riverside. Um, we 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 want the road to be to be completed because it links the communities of Deep Slot to economic activity in Foy. So so it's it's in our interest that this this road is a. Uh, is, uh, is, is, is completed. Look, there are lots of issues to be dealt with in uh, the city of Johannesburg. We do appreciate you taking the time to come out. Um, my assessment from what you are saying is that you've got to beef up your capacity to at least enforce uh, the bylaws. That's an area that uh, we could start. As you say, localized policing for local problems. It's local government election time this year. Uh, we'll see, Mayor, whether or not the residents are buying your message and uh, your ability to deliver a world-class African city. We appreciate your time with us here in studio. Thanks for having me. Mayor Jeff Makubo. Current events. Developing stories. Tough questions. Your voice making a difference. This is Breakfast with Bongani Bingwa.